Hey, everybody, this is TJR. And this is Robert Kinsler. And the announcement was made. Rock Hall of Fame nominees 2023. We have 14 nominees. And so we're going to discuss them. Talk about every single one of them. And uh, we invite you to share your thoughts, too, as well. Um, Robert, before we begin... I know that we need to discuss first the gorilla in the room. Right. So I'm going to let you take that, and then we'll we'll talk about that a little bit, and then we're going to talk about the list of the nominees. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we don't we don't want to obviously ignore the 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 nominees because that's front and center. But I think what I wanted to highlight because you know it seems like inevitably every year it comes up. Why don't some great um, 70s bands get any love from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So I'm thinking like Boston and Styx. And for me, it, maybe the strongest of those perhaps might be Bad Company mm -hmm. uh, because Paul Rogers, who's such an incredible singer and has so many accomplishments as, you know, within rock and roll, just has been fully ignored by the Rock Hall. So I just want to say that we're aware of that omission. And, and yeah. uh, like many fans, I think we share a a little bit of their, you know, being irritated that you're getting now some of the 80s and 90s artists coming in. But hey, wait a minute. What about some of these greats that emerged like a Boston who was so, had such a profound impact on radio and on arena rock and everything? So I think it's important to at least acknowledge that. I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, please. These artists, there's so many great artists from the 70s who are still waiting their turn. Uh, before they get too old, please, you know, let them see, live to see these acknowledgements. Uh, I mean, these younger artists, they'll get their time, I'm sure. Anyway, so, but yeah, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, every year, it's kind of the same thing. They put out their list. The internet gets angry <laughs> because, you know, their favorites didn't get nominated or whatever. And then, of course, there's the, why did these... Why did these people get nominated? They're not rock. I mean, last year, the most glaring example was Dolly Parton. A lot of viewers to this channel said, I love Dolly Parton, but she shouldn't be on this. And I, I agree. I, you know, I can't see what is, why Dolly Parton? And as I've said before, they should explain themselves. Why? Do you consider this person to be uh, influential? Even if they're not rock, did they influence rock? And we'll talk about some of that when we go over some of these, some of these nominees here. Um, right. So we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six repeat customers, I'll call them. And then we have the rest that are all newbies. So let's talk about these artists and give our thoughts here. So up on the top here, of course, is repeat customer Kate Bush. Do you have anything you want to say first? Sure. Well, to me, she should definitely be uh, one of the artists selected to get in this year. Um, just as a little background, because I know not all American, um, you know, audiences are fully familiar with who she is and why she's so significant. At the age of 19, Kate Bush topped the UK singles chart for four weeks with her debut single, uh, Weathering Heights. And Beyond, you know, you go, okay, so she had a top number one hit. A lot of people had that. She was the first female artist to achieve a UK number one hit with a self-written song. That had never happened before when she did that. So that was pretty incredible. And then I think some, many people out there will know, but not only are her, some of the hits she's had um, great songs, but, you know, the, you know, they were also, I think, somewhat groundbreaking in terms of what they did sonically and everything. And those would include um, uh, the man with the uh, with the child in her eyes. In his and, eyes. Um, yes, in his I'm eyes. sorry. But, yeah, I missed okay. both. Thank you. And then Running Up That Hill, I think everybody knows that song. And then Don't Give Up, which was the, was the hit duet she had with Peter Gabriel. And I think that if you listen to those, I think you get an idea of just how how especially for her era how special she was dj yeah. and i'm very familiar with the catalog because my partner is a huge fan she has all the albums 
And I have quite a few of them myself in my collect, my personal collection. And I first was introduced to her back in the 70s. I saw her perform on SNL, her only American TV appearance ever, as far as I know. And I watched her do um, um, Them Heavy People. And she did The Man with the Child in His Eyes, if I, if I remember correctly. But I was struck by her performance. And I picked up the album that she had out at the time, which uh, was The Kick Inside. And I listened to that album and I was just really impressed. She is right up there with, say, like Peter Gabriel, as right. far as yeah, like, how she's regarded artistically. And right. now, of course, with the Stranger Things tie in that happened last year and a whole new audience discovering her because of that show and because of the use of her song running up that hill, I think she's a shoe in. Yeah, I do too. She shouldn't be for that reason, but I'm glad anyways, because the timing is the timing is convenient. Yeah. It's convenient for the Rock Hall of Fame because she's relevant to the kids now. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk more about this, but that's you know, the Rock Hall of Fame, you know, they need to be relevant to the mainstream, the younger audience. We are not that means are not the mainstream audience anymore. Right, exactly. You know, we are the we're the old we're the old fogies now. So, um, and that's probably why some of those seventies artists are being passed on. Right, exactly. But now is the time to make she's a should be a shoe in because of that tie in because there's this renewed interest in her and the young kids know who she is. So, right. yeah. So I'm glad it's happening. I'm I, I would be surprised. I would be really shocked if it didn't happen at this point now. So there we go. Um, Iron Maiden. Anything you want to say about Iron Maiden? Yeah, yeah. Iron Maiden is a band that that uh, um, I think they've had staying power. Definitely a powerful oh, yeah. live band, a, a ferocious and dedicated following. I mean, no doubt about that. And again, they're like a lot of the names on this list. Probably, definitely uh, deserving of being nominated. And we'll just have to see how the how things play out. I'm not, I can't say that I'm as familiar with them as like I am with Kate Bush and some of the other artists, but I definitely appreciate that they, they deserve to be acknowledged with this nomination. All I'll do is quote Bill and Ted. Excellent. <laughs> Here we go. One more needs to be said. Um, yeah. We have, speaking of, you know, heavy bands, we have two other really heavy bands that come next that are repeat customers. Um, Rage Against the Machine. And Soundgarden. Right. Exactly. And, um, you know, Rage Against the Machine. Oh, my gosh. They've needed to be in the Rock Hall of Fame for so long. Right. Exactly. Um, you know, just for how innovative they were. Uh, the whole rap rock crossover mashup. The insane guitar riffs. Um, just just I mean, there's just so many reasons why um, I think Rage Against the Machine needs to be there. Um, Soundgarden. Newer band, but part of the whole Seattle scene, part of that group of bands that that broke everything open and changed the whole scene during the 90s, along with Nirvana and Alice in Chains and all these other bands. I would I would say let's get the older folks in first, like Iron Maiden. I which I would just prioritize by Iron Maiden first yeah. because they've been around longer. You know, if you I only agree. could choose one of these three, Iron Maiden. What you know? What I will and, say, TJ. What I would like to say, though, is I think when you look at a lot of those grunge bands, the Seattle bands that emerged, you know, mm -hmm. in that era, I would say Soundgarden would probably be, uh, to me, the most adventuresome, the most ambitious in terms of sonically. I mean, I I think my heart always kind of went to Pearl Jam because they just flat out rock, especially on that first album. Mm -hmm. But I give. I give kudos to Soundgarden. I think kind of like Rage Against the Machine, they were doing, you know, they were charting new territory. And I think that that is a, is a key element in consideration for them getting in the Rock Hall. And yeah, good points, Robert. And I think that, um, you know, going back to Rage Against the Machine, I think Tom Morello alone deserves a nomination for being, you know, right up there with some of the most innovative guitarists we've ever had, like Eddie Van Halen, like The Edge, like Jimi Hendrix. I put Tom Morello right in there as well. I think, you know, he deserves uh, his own separate nomination. Um, but hey, you know, Rage Against the Machine, that's a good start, in my opinion. Yeah. 
But I'm just going to prioritize and say, look, you know, Rock Hall of Fame, if you can only choose one of these heavy acts, um, Iron Maiden, because they've been around the longest. But hopefully we see more of them. Hopefully we get Rage Against the Machine, too, as well. I, I would not be disappointed with any of them, you know, making it in. But like I said, they, they're probably not going to, you know, they're all heavy bands, but they're not going to bring all three. But Kate Bush deserves her turn. And certainly these three, you know, heavy rock bands deserve their turn. Next, we have the Spinners. They're an, uh, an American rhythm and blues vocal group. To me, there's no secret as to why they've been nominated. All of these early R&B groups have had an influence on rock and roll. Maybe you don't say they're rock and roll, but they're influencers. At this point now, most of these groups that had hits during the 60s and 70s, these type of R&B groups, they have influenced rock at this point now. They're all, they can all be counted as influencers, in my opinion. Um, but um, I'm probably going to lean more towards the ones we've already mentioned uh, ahead, of, ahead of them. Um, right. I think there should almost be a, se- a separate category for influencers. You I know, agree. They're not rock necessarily, but there's an influence. You know, the Beatles, I'll just use the Beatles. They loved, and uh, they loved like, uh, the, the Spinners were, an Amer- were an, a male vocal group, but the Beatles loved the American female groups. Mm-hmm. And they loved the British female groups. And they loved all the all the Motown R and B acts like Smokey Robinson, you know, and and you know, uh, you know. So you can't not include, you know, just for that reason alone, uh, you know. That's just the Beatles, but so many of the rock bands of the sixties and seventies were influenced by these by exactly. by all these R and B soul groups, which is why I don't have a problem with them. Just like the the blues, the elder statesman blues players. Definitely, you know, you, you know, their influence is obvious. But at this point now, these, you know, all of these R&B groups from the 60s and the 70s, you can't not count them as an influence on rock. But okay. so now after that, the last repeat customer is a tribe called Quest. I'm honestly not familiar with them at all. I can't comment. I know they are a hip hop band. I know they've been considered very influential. I know that a lot of people are asking, why is hip hop included? I know that's another gorilla in the room that people, you know, have a problem with. You know, the only thing I can say, and I think I've said this in previous videos, is that rock is not the mainstream anymore, especially with the youth culture. And part of what the Rock Hall of Fame is about is celebrating youth culture. And the rock we grew up was part of our youth culture. Hip hop is part of the current generations. And actually now I think it's almost two generations now culture. Yeah. You know, and I'm speaking from the perspective of the rock hall of fame that either they become this slowly eroding irrelevant thing, or they just say, okay, we're going to accept hip hop. Now I was initially against the whole idea until I heard the speech, um, by ice, um, ice cube. I think it was, um, um, his speech about why he felt, Rap should be included in the Rock Hall of Fame. And I thought, hey, he makes a good point, actually. Rock and roll is a spirit. It's a spirit. It's been going since the blues, jazz, bebop. And I would recommend checking out that video. It's on YouTube. You could check out his speech on it. And uh, I, I, it was kind of like, okay, I see your point. Well, that was a good argument. But, you know, that's the reason why. You can agree with it. You can disagree with it. But it's the only way they're going to stay relevant to the younger generation. Uh, like it or not, that's just the way it is. They're never going to say it like I just said it, but that's the reason. Anyways, though, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. I don't have a, PG, I don't have a lot to add. I think you hit the nail on the head. I think in order to remain relevant and not become a dinosaur, exactly like that's why we're seeing some names that like – like uh you know some of the artists that i always say why yeah. why aren't they and why is it so and so and why are these other people that are not you know you know like a dolly parton like you know a percy sledge yeah. over the years like wait a minute how did they jump in front of so many great rock artists that have been eligible for so long but i i think you just stated it very well okay so um after a tribe called quest now we have the first timers club and so let's talk about these um cheryl crow anything you want to say well, you know, I'll say I, I've seen Cheryl Crow. I gave her a very good review. Um, I think she's been, um, you know, a very successful hit maker. 
I don't, I would not think she would get in ahead of some of the other names that we've talked about previously. Uh, does she deserve to be nominated? Probably, but I don't think I would list her as one of the strongest names on the, on the list this year. You know, I think she's a great artist and um, I think she has, she's very deserving of the nomination, but I would side with you and just simply say, let's please let the older folks in first. And, you know, and I think we're going to be saying that a couple of times tonight uh, yeah. before we finish this up. Um, but yeah, otherwise, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, next is Missy Elliott. And so here we, of course, we have, you know, hip hop artist, and I've already talked about that. Um, with that said, I'm not real familiar with the catalog, but I'll tell you something. I really like that song, Work It. I think that song just <laughs> kicks ass. And I've never explored anything further, but I hear that song. I'm like, I'm into that groove. I'm into that vibe. But I can't really comment too much beyond that. You know, I've never listened to any more of her catalog. But if the rest of her catalog is as good as that, then I'd say, yeah, sure. You know, because, you know, hip hop is not going away. It's, you know, it's a part of the culture. And so, yeah, sure. Why not at this point? I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, no, I, I, I like you to, are not very familiar with her catalog at all. So I, I'm, I'm kind of agnostic on it. Like I said, there was... There were some names on the list this year that I was really excited about and said, yeah, I would love to see them get in. With her, I just, you know, I I, I, I have to honestly say I'm just not that familiar. No worries. Uh, so next we have Joy Division forward slash New Order. I would say, yes, definitely. It's high time. This yeah. was an extremely influential band. Maybe not as that well known to the general, most of the general public. It's probably going to be one of those that I think a lot of the, you know, uh, Jane and Joe, you know, average are going to be like, who are they? I think I've heard of them. What hits do they have? Definitely a very influential band. Definitely high time for a nomination. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, TJ. I'm a huge fan of Joy Division. And people might say, wait a minute, Joy Division, New Order, what's it? Well, the, the members of New Order, which came after, it was just basically the same band, but without uh, uh, Joy Division lead singer Ian Curtis who, yeah, um, so they were very ill and and committed suicide. But both bands very influential and have had their music has staying power. You still still hear them, and uh, you still hear younger artists um, discuss their relevancy as well. And um, I'm glad they did it that way because you're right. It's the same band. They changed their name after they lost the lead singer, which was sad. But yeah. they're the same band. You know, so I'm glad they did it that way. And I think that was, I thought that was really good thinking on their part. After yeah. that, of course, we have, she's so unusual, Cindy <laughs> Lauper. You know, any thoughts? I mean, I know big hit maker in the 80s, a big part of the whole 80s pop scene. Um, yeah. Any thoughts? You know, all I would say here is, is, and I know she's been around longer than Cheryl, obviously, but I would say, again, you know, a very successful hit maker, but I guess kind of um, I keep wanting to compare some of the artists to someone like Kate Bush, who's kind of more ambitious oh, yeah. and done more revolutionary things sonically. So uh, like I would say, I would maybe push her back a little bit in favor of some of the artists that we've said we'd really like to get in, either because of their age or because of just how amazing their their art is. Sure. Um, and then next we have George Michael. And um, I'm going to say this, you know, um, I have one George Michael album, Listen Without Prejudice, Volume 1. That album, I was floored by that album, how good it was. For that reason alone, sure. And I, I would concur with that. I mean, I, I would say there's some other people on the list that I would I would put in ahead of him since we know they're not all going to get in. Mm -hmm. Um but, but you know, I found the list overall this year, I don't know if I've touched on this, I found it very eclectic. And I also liked how it it was from different generations of artists, like you said, spanning from artists in the 60s to those in the 80s. Um, so, um, you know, I, th I think it's definitely deserving of a nomination, but I wouldn't necessarily, he would not be in my list of the top names that I would vote in if I was a voter. Sure. Um, so next, uh, speaking of old timers, we've got Willie Nelson. Now, again, just like with Dolly Parton, we have a country artist, um, country music artist. But Willie Nelson, in my opinion, is a different story. Just my opinion. I think he kind of transcends country. 
You took it's the word out of Johnny my mouth. Cash did. I agree. Yeah, I think he, I mean, I think his songs, I think a lot of his songs transcend country. I think he transcends it. And to me, I can see and feel the influence of Willie Nelson on rock. And so definitely, definitely, yeah. you know, and I'm okay with him getting pushed closer up to the top too, because he is one of the older folks. Let him live to see yeah. this. Okay. I mean, Willie Nelson, it. I believe they're having a big two day festival this year in Los Angeles celebrating his 90th birthday wow. with people. I think it's like a whole slew of great. I mean, off top of, I know I, I, I saw it in my email box, but yeah, he, he is deserving. And, um, you know, get Will and Nelson in. I mean, you know, he's yeah. 90. It would be, yeah. you know, it would be great to, if they, they got Dolly Parton in there, let's put Will and Nelson in there. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I, and, and nothing against Dolly Parton. Like a lot of people say, yeah. you know, I love her. Yeah. You know, but exactly. Will and Nelson definitely put him to the top. move him up to the top, please. He's an icon. Right. Let him exactly. live to see this. Okay. Uh, next um, we have the white stripes. I'm going to say this. I think, I think they should have done just like they did with Joy Division slash New Order. New Order, um, the White Stripes forward slash Jack White, right? Because of all that Jack White has done beyond the White Stripes, all of his different side projects and bands, all of his solo work, Third Man Records, right? Um, you know, just everything. He's just just his whole involvement. The White Stripes are just one aspect of all of that. I, I'm glad he's finally gotten nominated. I think even he would say, I'm glad I got nominated, but please let these older folks get in first before me. I think he'd even say that. I think he's that kind of a guy. Yeah. I think he so respects the icons, the legacy artists, you know, that he would probably be the first to say, yeah, that's okay. I'm, I'm going to be around here a little bit longer, you know. I'm still a young pup compared to some of these other guys here. So uh, I think I think he'd say that. I I I feel that. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really glad. But I really think, you know, the white stripes is just one component. I, it's like to me, it's 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 white stripes forward slash Jack White, you know, or he deserves his own nomination at some point down the line. Right. Right. Yeah. I I I don't really have much to add to that. I entirely agree. I agree with you. I think he would be the first one to say, let's let the Kate Bush in. Let's get Willie Nelson in there. Let's get some of these yeah. important veterans in there. Yeah. yeah. Good, good call, TJ. He has such a respect for history and it, and it, and you hear it in his music, yeah. the respect he has for the history that's come before him. So that brings us to the last of the new timers, which is Warren, Warren Zevon. And right. uh, do you want to say something before I do? I I, sh I sure do. I think that this may have been the biggest surprise on the list, but for me, he would be that might be where I cast my first vote, TJ. Mm -hmm. I think there's been kind of probably like the case with the Paul Rogers or something, but for years people have been trying to get uh, his name listed at least as a nominee. Um, you know, and it, it, it expand, extends way beyond his songs. You know, he didn't have a lot of hits. I guess you could say Werewolves of London was a big yeah. hit. And I think most rock listeners know Lawyers, Guns, and Money. I think everybody knows that. Yeah. But um, I think when you look upon, like, um, you know, he actually started getting more acclaim after Linda Ronstadt covered um, uh, his songs. I think, I think uh, as I recall, she had a pretty good version of Poor, Poor, Pitiful Me, as I recall. You might know for sure. Um, and um, but he he's just a really interesting artist and a fantastic um, songwriter with a unique st a style uh, that he had. And I, I was really glad to see him nominated. Yeah. Um, one of the one of the songs off his uh, last album that he released is one of the most heartbreaking songs I've ever heard in my life. And anyways, though, but yeah, I'm I'm glad that's happened. Too bad he's not here to see it, but I'm yeah. glad it's happened. And so real quick here, um, we've only got a few more minutes left here before we have to uh, kind of clear out of here. Um, just um, in case you're wondering, because everybody asks in the comments, who votes? Who votes? So this is from their from the Rock Hall of Fame website. Um, nominee ballots will be sent to an international voting body of more than 1,000 artists, historians, and members of the music industry. 
an artist's musical impact and influence on other artists, length and depth of career and body of work, as well as innovation and superiority in style and technique are taken into consideration. So just in case you're going to ask who votes on these things, that's who does it. And um, also fans around the world uh, can participate in the induction selection process through the fan vote. Through April 28th, fans can vote online every day at vote.rockhall.com or in person at the museum in Cleveland. As I've said before, I feel uh, my feelings about the Rock Hall of Fame uh, similar to the Grammys. It's fun when somebody that I know and like wins. It's fun because, oh, let me see what they say. They're going to give a speech. Let me see what they're going to say. But at the end of the day, I'm there just to watch the live performances. And at the end of the day, it doesn't, I don't, it just doesn't, it's never really mattered to me too much who wins these things, you know. Um, certainly, I, there are lots of deserving artists that need to get honored. And uh, and I think eventually everybody will get their day, but I hope that that the older artists get a chance to see it happen before they before they move on from this mortal coil. And uh, anyways, though, um, yeah, we're getting so deep on this show, Robert. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah. though, um, so with that said, let us know your thoughts. What did you think of this list? Who are your favorites? Who do you want to see make it in? Who should be nominated that hasn't been? you know, let us know, put it in the comments. And if you like this video or you like the videos that Robert and I do in general, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification icon. If you really like us, you might want to click that super thanks button, you know, and, you know, you can give us a little extra love that way. Uh, otherwise, we uh, want to thank the patron supporters. Uh, the patron supporters do receive exclusive weekly videos not available here on the channel. and. Um, and they get their name in, names in the credits. Um, if you'd like to be a patron supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash TJR, the original. And Robert, thanks. It was it was good to have a, a conversation about this. And, you know, everybody, let's try to keep it civil out there. Um, please state your grievances. But like I said, let's just keep it civil. Good talking to you, Robert. And thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. See you later, everyone.